Chris Barbers. Yo, what's the Dellas, everybody? Here's a good one for the peanut gallery. They wanted me to start with a good one. What's the Dallas? Yo, Jesse, what's the Dallas? What's the Dallas? You cannot say what's the Dallas and not be in a good mood. I encourage you to do it each and every day. I'm no longer a comedian. From now on, I am going to be a motivational speaker and medium. I want to be a medium. I want to learn how to talk to dead people. Can I acquire that skill? Do I have the 5G network in my head to be able to have conversations with people on the other side like John Edward? I want to do it. I want to do it, and I won't have a bad cell phone connection. Do you ever notice all the people who talk to dead people just can't quite hear what they're saying? You can hear them, but it's like they got Metro PCS. They're kind of going like, I'm sorry, um, what was that? Okay, with a P. I'm looking for a word that starts with a P. And someone who had a relative who wore a hat on one day. Do you have a relative who died who wore a hat? Someone who you love has passed. Is everyone over 35 in the room? Wow, that's a coincidence. Let me tell you something. These fucking mediums after COVID-19 are going to be making bank bank cuz because what are we at now one million dead and that's just in florida and they don't care and i love it florida doesn't care about death cuz they don't fear death they do cocaine you tell a guy on cocaine that covid's coming he's gonna say how can i snort it they don't care and he's gonna say that in spanish he's gonna say yo cuando snort it I don't know how to say snort. Living in Miami when you don't speak Spanish is funny. I lived in Miami for a year. It's a Spanish city, okay? It's a type of city you can go to and experience all the great Latin American cultures without the worry of having to lose your jewelry at dinner. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you ever wanted to go to Venezuela and enjoy Venezuelan food amongst Venezuelan people who, by the way, do not speak English, go to Doral. Get yourself some Venezuelan food. For all intents and purposes, you are in Venezuela, except there is toilet paper at the store. <laughs> and you can wear your watch to dinner. So that's Miami. It's like the Epcot Center for Latin American countries. You want to go? It's like going to Miami is like going, you know when you go stay at the Hotel Paris in Vegas and they have the Eiffel Tower there? That's Miami for Caracas. So COVID is fucking going up. Big deal. Big deal. It's spiking. Big deal. You know what else is spiking? My blood pressure. Big fucking deal. Okay? It's going up. But we can't stop the party now. You can't open the gates and then try to close them. Okay? The gates are open. Let people fucking party and just people got to get vaccinated. Okay? There is a push to have people vaccinated pretty soon. They're going to open it up for everybody in New York, at least. I love how this is being done state by state. We're, we're not a country. We are united countries. We're all different. Georgia and New York got nothing to do with each other, okay, except for the fact that they both like Lil Nas and his new sneakers. That's it. That's it, okay? The rap ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? Big L, Cool G Rap, Rock Kim. EPMD, the original fucking hip hop from the East Coast, got nothing to do with Outkast and all these other dudes who's using auto tunes and rapping. It's got nothing to do with that. If you listen to the Southern rap, it always says, Sounds like someone with cerebral palsy trying to be hip hop. We got nothing to do with each other. We're different countries. We're different countries. So the vaccine rollout is different in different places. But in New York, they just made it 30 and over. Uh, starting tomorrow, right? 30 and over it starts. So Drew, Drew can't get the vaccine for seven years. <laughs> but it's okay, cuz. I don't want it anymore. Yeah, it's okay. 
know what I mean? You're, you're, you live in Jersey. You smell the the air of Elizabeth, New Jersey. So I don't think COVID can hurt you. You really think, co- what's worse for you, COVID or the air quality of Elizabeth, Jersey? Newark. Newark, <laughs> yeah. What would you rather do? Would you rather, this will take the scary out of COVID. Jesse, I'm asking you, because you're from a generation where we're scared. Drew didn't grow up scared, okay? So would you rather walk around Newark, around Newark, Bionni Bodens, I just called it Newark, Newark. Would you rather walk around Newark, New Jersey mm-hmm. from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. alone, no cell phone, no hat, so your white hair is flapping in the wind on a windy night to mix your hair move, okay, with, with a Blogziago jacket on, <laughs> okay, with, with um, yeah, some a Blogziago bag, a Blogziago jacket, and some fucking Saint Laurent sneakers on with a chain wallet, a chain, a chain wallet, a short sleeve shirt, and a gleaming Rolex with diamonds in it, or get COVID. COVID. COVID, I'll take, easy. I'll take a blast right in the face. Yeah, a blast of COVID Dude. right in the fucking. What is more dangerous? COVID is not more dangerous than walking around Newark with a Blagiajo on. I agree with Jesse, a hundred percent. Yes. Now, how do you pronounce it? Well, if you're from there, it's Newark. No, no, no. Not Newark, asshole. I'm talking about the fucking, the, 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 oh, the bag. Balenciaga. Balenciaga. that's a Louis, a Louis Vuitton bag. You got a Louis Vuitton. Cuz your jersey. Your jersey. You look like you, get, you look like you know a cousin who works at Bloomingdale's in, in, in an outlet store. Drew comes dressed like he has an inside scoop at the Bloomingdale's at some Long Island outlet. Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus. That's what it is. Because Neiman Marcus got the premium fucking goods. Sacks on fifth, baby. So COVID is spiking. Everywhere, and um, I don't even know why you're even telling the people that anymore. At this point, it's like get the vaccines going. We're not going another year indoors. Americans are ready to rock, and Florida's leading the charge, brother. <laughs> when did you think Florida was going to become number one in anything besides cocaine and gator deaths? Florida is the only fucking state where it has happened more than 300 times where someone disappeared in the stomach of an alligator. There's be, there's been babies that were eaten by alligators. There's a chance when you grow up in Florida that you could die of SIDS, which is where, you know, your baby rolls over and dies with its face in the floor or getting eaten by a gator. So when the doctor, the pediatrician... Uh, the first visit you do to the pediatrician in Florida, they go, first of all, the guy's like, what's up, brother? Welcome. Welcome to a uh, happy smile, happy body, happy baby pediatrician down here in Fort Lauderdale. And then you got a doctor who walks in and flip flops with a salamander tattoo <laughs> and, uh, and a seashell rope around his neck. And he goes, what's up, brother? Welcome to Florida. Congratulations on your baby, Ginger. I don't know what your name is, but I saw you had blonde hair. Is it okay if I call you Ginger, brother? My memory is not so good. I see a lot of patients and I do recreational drug use every day. Is that all right with you, brother? I drink my beer out of paper cups whenever I can if plastic. Plastic cups aren't available, but since I'm in Florida, brother, when me and my family settle down for a dinner, we pour our beer into plastic cups, brother, once in a while. I'll bite a little hole at the bottom of it and drink it like that from the bottle just to make it a little fun for the family. And so does my 40-year-old when I put beer in his thermos. You got to get him started, brother, but welcome. You got a new baby. First of all, Don't let the baby sleep on its stomach, brother. That's something my grandparents did. They were immigrants. We should have kicked them out back then, build a wall. There should be nobody here who isn't America born in Florida, brother. But our grandparents let the baby sleep under his stomach. That baby better sleep on his back, brother. And one other thing, don't put that baby ever outside because there's gators everywhere, brother. So the pediatrician will actually add that on to his advice. So be careful of SIDS, don't shake the baby, and please keep the baby inside until it's old enough to run away from a gator. (laughs) Comment roulette, as you know, we look down every episode, whatever comment I see, I read, what you doing, brother? My worldwide, if you sleep on your stomach, you're a liberal. (laughs) 
That's what it is. I sleep on my stomach, and I, I, who people say I lean left. So there you go. I sleep on my stomach. I think if you sleep on your stomach, it's more of a woman thing, right? With one leg up to air your pussy out. <laughs> I like to put my leg up or put a pillow in between because my nuts, I don't know what, what my nuts want with my leg, but my nuts are very attracted to the inside of my leg. So they always stick on them because your dick also gets old. This is what I want people to know. I look very young. That's the thing about me. Drew, I, I, I think I'm closer in age to your mom than I am you, right? How old is yeah. your mom? 61. 61. So pretty close to both, right? But I'm closer to your mom right than I am between. you. Yeah. So it's like, but I look good. If I walked in your house and I was shaved, your mom would just think I was one of your friends from fucking New Brunswick College, right? 100%. Yeah. She would just be like, oh, that's one of Drew's friends from New Brunswick school. From film school, right? From finger painting school with Jesse. <laughs> you guys are two artists. And uh, I, I'm a young looking kid, but my piece looks my age. So <laughs> if you really wanted to see if I was lying, if you want to know if a guy's lying about his age, if he looks young like Brad Pitt, pull down his pants and take a peek at where his balls are. If his balls are plastered up against the inside of his, his, his thighs, and if his dick just kind of looks dead... <laughs> You know, Yanni sleeps on his stomach so his morning wood doesn't steal the covers. Yanni temp pitch. Get the Tempur-Pedic sleep pillow, dude. Thank you, Megan Party. So let's get some business out of the way, my peoples. And by business, I mean some touring. Go to my website, GiannisPappasComedy.com. Very important. I am at the Celebrity Theater in New Jersey, May 7th and 8th. Get your fucking tickets. It's going to be wild. Atlantic City Celebrity Theater, May 7th and 8th. Go to GiannisPappasComedy.com for tickets. I will be in Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, get those tickets if you're in Norwalk, uh, Connecticut. Um, and uh, uh, right now you're watching this. I'm doing my last show in, um, in Addison outside of Dallas. I hope that goes okay. I hope the weekend's been going good. And uh, where else am I going to be? Tampa! I'm going to be in Tampa sometime uh, in September, I believe. So get your tickets if you live in Florida. GiannisPappasComedy.com. Get those fucking tickets. Jersey, I'm coming to Atlantic City. I'm bringing Drew. I would bring Jesse too, but that he, the kid, just does, he's got finger painting to do. He doesn't want to go. He does not want to go. So let's get the business out of the way. That's the business. Patreon.com slash Days. For your bonus episodes every Wednesday. If Sunday's not enough long days, you go, I need another app. That app comes out on Wednesday called Squeaky Clean. And it's Yanni doing comedy, but fucking naked. If you want to hear me talking to you and staring at my piece at the same time, and I hope you do the same. That is the point. I want everyone in their goddamn bathtubs. Like I said on the bonus episode, when they, when they bury me when I die, put me in a fucking bathtub coffin. I want you to put me in a water with a, with, a, with a cover over it. Fucking cover me up. Okay? And I'm adding a level to the Patreon. The Patreon level I'm adding is $5,000 a month. If you donate $5,000 a month, I will fly to your house, no cost to you, and I will do squeaky clean in your bathtub. <laughs> so I don't even think I want to do comedy anymore. I don't even think I want to do stand-up. First of all, I'm not, I don't think I'm doing jokes anymore. I think I'm riffing everywhere I go. I'm going like, hey, come out and see me, and if I bomb, I bomb, but we're talking about stuff off the top of the head. I think I'm done with jokes. I think jokes have been done. What do you want to hear about my day? You want to hear about my marriage? You want to hear about my baby? And Brian Regan said it all, okay? I'm going to be riffing about Texas when I'm down in Texas, and I don't even think I'm going to start. I don't even think I'm going to be doing stand-up anymore. What I'm going to do Okay, instead of standing on a stage and, and telling jokes to you, which is fun, you know, people have fun. Some girl came and saw me in Atlanta at Uncle Vinny's um, comedy club. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to charge tickets to perform with people in their bathtub butt naked. What do you think, Jess? <laughs> I like it. So we, fit, we do like VIP tickets to stand in the bathtub and then me and the person who's home who paid the five grand to get me in their bathtub. We podcast together and we charge $20 tickets to the community. And then we stream it. We could stream it. Yeah, yeah. We could stream it. 
We'll stream it on um, pay per view. Pay per view. It'll be a pay per view live bathtub show. Okay, I'm in the fucking tub, rubber ducky, rubber ducky. Okay, while I'm talking to you, sometimes I'm I'm just tugging on my ball sack. Suds or no suds? I do suds, cause I've been using my baby's uh, baby shampoo, cause it doesn't. You can you can wash your hair. I like to sit in the bathtub with my hair full of soap, eyes open, and just take advantage of the fact that they made some sort of baby shampoo that doesn't get in your eyes. I have a question for the capitalist system in America. Why, if baby shampoo doesn't burn your eyes, why the fuck do we have adult shampoo? Okay. You do know we have phones now. Can someone adapt? Am I the only one thinking of a new business here? People like to text. We're addicted to our phones. All these apps make us addicted. We can't stop. There's no such thing as boredom. It's been rendered out of existence. So why has someone not come up with an adult shampoo that you can continue to look at your phone at, they're waterproof now, while you're showering? I want to be able to shower and fucking read my live stream texts, comments while I shower and wash my hair. I don't want to take a break. I might miss something. Adult baby shampoo. Dude. That's right there. No tears. Yeah, no tears. So kids can put shampoo on. I still use that. Yeah, of course you still do that. You're 23 because you were a baby 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was doing comedy. <laughs> it could be a kid. I mean, yo... He, yeah, he we were talking be, about that. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to have him pretty young, but like, yeah, in yesteryears, yeah, he could be your grandson. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you're a Puerto Rican, you could definitely have me young. There you go. That's why Drew's not woke. Drew is not woke. Not even a little. Not even a little. So, why has someone not created baby shampoo for adults so we can do that? You know, because that's what I like to do. I like to text while I'm, sh I'm washing my hair. Dog shampoo, I've used it. I've tried it. Dog food, I've tried it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dog treats, yeah. I mean, I've been giving my dog dog lung, and I try. I mean, I've been giving him um, pig lung. Oh, you tried that? Yeah, but my dog doesn't want to be. My dog told me he, she was Muslim, cuz. So I got to get rid of the, the pig and start giving her some goot. Yeah. Pretty sure they make that no tears adult shit, but it's like 69 a bottle or something. Thank you, Rob's Mental Playground. I don't think they do. I just looked up. I put adult shampoo that doesn't burn your eyes and only kid shampoos exactly. popping up. They You're don't wrong, make it. You're wrong, Rob. There Rob's you go. Rob's wrong. I have a venture capitalist idea for my people. You guys should be in a race right now to go create that. Here's what you do. Take Johnson's and Johnson's baby shampoo and slap on your own label and sell that shit on your website. We'll call it the long haulers. We'll split the money, communist style. We'll redistribute it. I'll sell it on my website. I'll promote it on my podcast. So I'll be double dipping. Okay, I'll pay myself to advertise it. And then I will also share in the profits with you. So who's going to be the person that takes that shampoo, slaps on a label on it, okay? And that label's just adult shampoo that you can text with. That's how we pitch it. We go on Shark Tank because we go in there. Our pitch is like, hey, guys, we walk in. Do you ever hate when you're in the shower and you want to be playing with your phone, but you can't because your eyes will burn? Bang. Squeaky clean soap brought to you by the long haulers. If you're not a long hauler, what are you doing with your fucking pathetic COVID-infested life? Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Join. We're in it for the long haul. Come on over. Join up. Join the crew. Join the crowd. People ask, how come there's no community page on Patreon.com? They removed it for some reason. I don't know. We're going to have to look into why they took, they got rid of that community page. I don't know. Mark Cuban versus Elon Musk. In what? Sounds about as legal as anything else a Greek kid would do. There you go. We like cash in the madras. So it's definitely a white boy summer. Definitely a white boy summer, according to Chet Hanks, who I don't know about you, he is my favorite Tom Hanks son. It does not get better than Chet Hanks, okay? Because Chet Hanks is the son of Rita Wilson and Tom Tom Hanks, which means he's a little Greek, so respect. And I fucking like him, and I follow him. He's presently doing the 60-day challenge where the kid just works out on Instagram every day. Now, here's the deal. If you're 
People hate on him because he was speaking Patois. Nobody's impressed by the fact that this kid fucking learned Jamaican. I mean, nobody's impressed by the fact that Tom Hanks' son somehow learned Jamaican. He does it great. He does it great. He knows how to speak it. Big up, big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chetana coming straight from the Golden Globes, you know what I'm saying? Me feeling father Tom Hanks by saying, and I want to forward come. Big up, tune in. Psych! Remember that video? Psych! Yeah, pussy boy Biden! You know? So, why is that kid... He's put out all types of different music. I love you, Chet Hanks. Your music's been horrible in the past. But why don't you put out some fucking reggae? Would you not buy Chet Hanks' reggae album? The kid is a grinder. He works hard. So, he works out, right? He, he's buff. He, he's tatted up. He's buff. I think he has a, a mixed daughter. So, I think he... he he, um, the mother of his child is black. So the kid's got some flavor. Bill Burn it, yeah. He's got some flavor. He rides motorcycles where he can do two wheelies and shit. The kid is constantly wearing Vans. Constantly wearing Vans. White boy summer. And now he's causing, at first he caused controversy because he was talking to Adele on his Instagram in Patois. Adele, Adele, hit me up. Whatever, bad boy. Body boy. Where were you when you found out body boy, boom, bye, bye, and a body boy hide meant, um, Shoot a, shoot a gay guy in the head and wait till he's dead. Right now. Yeah, because I remember where I was for the OJ verdict. I remember where I was when Bernie Sanders lost. And when I finally learned that that song that I had been getting high to and grinding on girls to in high school, what that chorus actually meant. Buju Bantan existed in a time before cancel culture where his hit song was Boom Bye Bye in a Bati Boy's Head. That's a little rude. That's a little rude, Buju Bantan. Because that, that chorus, I mean, verbatim means shoot a, shoot a Bati Boy in the head. So Chet Hanks, the kid is like, dude, it's like people give Chet Hanks shit. The guy's working hard. Like, what do you want him to do if you're Tom Hanks' son? You want him to get a job at FedEx? I mean, the guy is buff. He's in shape. He actually acts in movies. He's starting, he started a, an acting coach's um, seminar where he coaches you on how to act. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, like the Actors Connection or something it's called. It's in his bio. You know, he's done mad, like a, a, since he was a teenager, he's done mad music videos. They're horrific. But, you know, my comedy when I was a teenager was horrific too. I was running around with my nuts tucked behind my, I used to run around at parties with my nuts tucked between my legs and yell la puss. Jesse remembers. I used to call myself the Robo Cheese Man. I've told it once, I've told it again. I was born to do this and nothing else. Drew asked me before, what would I do if I didn't do comedy? Heroin. Hmm. And Drew also asked me, which was very funny, and we laughed about it last week. He said, he goes, um... Do you want me to, like, rephrase yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead, because I know... Is there one thing that Drew like, likes to do more than talking? I haven't seen it. Hit us. I was like, hey, uh, Yanni, let's just say you were still engaged and your wedding was in two months. Would I be invited? Yes. So what he asked me, and it was very funny, <laughs> he asked if I would, if he, because we've known each other, what now? Two, two months? Like three months, maybe. Three months, two, three months. So he asked if, if, I, if I was to get married now, would he be invited to my wedding? Which was, <laughs> this is a very funny. Two months from now. <laughs> two months from now. If my wedding was in two months. So you, what are you saying? If it was in two months, I would project we'd become better friends in two months and I invite you to the wedding? Yeah. You would get an invite to the wedding because make no mistake, my, my father-in-law shelled out a couple of shekels for that one. So I think half the people at the wedding I didn't know. So I would have just added you to a list with Ari Shafir, who I'm also not that good friends with. Yeah, I wouldn't even need a plus one. Yeah, I mean, Sal Volcano was at my wedding. I so I think the other Impractical Jokers might have been there too. I don't remember. I mean, people were at my wedding for like 15 minutes. I mean, Andrew Schultz wore a fucking Don Johnson Miami suit to a black tie event. And it was fun. How lit was my fucking wedding though? Yeah, you yeah. had that whole New York comedy scene at your wedding. Yeah, everyone came out. I think you would have been invited to my wedding, Drew. I like you, Drew. See, now... now I'm having FOMO over not going. <laughs> exactly. Well, you can, you can watch the video like one of the fans did and move your monkey to it, apparently. So, pro producer SmackDown, is a gyro just a Greek taco asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of is, yes. 
And Greeks need to loosen up. If, it, if someone calls it a gyro, it's fine. There's a G there. It doesn't have to be gyro every time. If you want to make it a gyro, put a fucking Y there. It's America. Now, Chet Hanks. Fucking Chet Hanks works hard. It's like when people bust his balls because he speaks Patois and all this stuff, it's like, dude, to be Tom Hanks' son and to work as hard, if I was Tom Hanks' son, do you know what I'd do? I would be a DJ like every other famous person's kid, okay? I'm sure Michael Douglas has like eight kids who are DJs. Here's the thing. If you're a celebrity and you have a kid, there is a 100% chance your kid will be a DJ. I even think Paris, isn't Paris Hilton even a DJ? DJ is yeah. just what you become when you know you can never be more famous than your pops. Here's the thing though. Chet Hanks fucking knows that, dude. I bet you if you had a conversation with Chet Hanks, he would probably say like, yeah, dude, Tom Hanks is my pops. Tom, Rita Wilson's my mom's. They're two of the most powerful people in fucking Hollywood. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna become, I'm gonna become like Michael Jordan's son and play Division Three. okay? Nah, dude. I'm gonna become the fucking littest, most controversial kid on Instagram and speak patois and get on there and say it's about to be a white boy summer. That, he is the best, I mean, he's, Instagram is a job, dog. He's selling merch. He's selling merch, dog. Do you want to fucking, I mean, how, how unrealistic and hateful are people that they want to walk into a smoothie shop and see Chet Hanks working behind it? Except reality. His dad could give him pocket change and he could buy my apartment building. So Chet Hanks is for, everything's all relative. I'm pretty sane for a kid who does stand-up comedy. Chet Hanks is a hard worker for a kid whose father was born out of Tom Hanks' dick. He's, he's a harder worker. Who's a harder worker? Chet Hanks or the other? Or Colin? Colin ain't making no fucking headlines. He did one fucking child movie. He looks too much. He looks too much like Tom Hanks. So he, Colin Hanks is the one who fucking isn't living up to his dad's name. Chet Hanks is making news every week. Okay? That's his girl, by the way. That's his girl. So, I mean, you see Chet Hanks, and what I love about Chet Hanks is you see Chet Hanks, and you have no idea who his father is because the kid looks like he was made in a Petri dish. He doesn't look like Tom Hanks, and he doesn't look like Rita Wilson. Shout out Rita Wilson. She's Greek. People don't know that. And also Tom Hanks, I think, converted to Greek Orthodox. So shout out. They're a family I hold dear to my heart, as every Greek does. That's why I'm defending Chet Hanks. I like Colin Hanks, too. But Colin Hanks did like two, three movies, dog. Do you know how easy it is to do movies? Do you know how hard it is to do the 60-day challenge? And fuck? Have you seen Chad Hanks' workout? The kid looks like he just did a bid, son. He looks like he just came out of jail. That's He's got a fucking jail body, Tom, Chad Hanks. And he speaks patois? I mean, come on, dog. People got to stop giving Chad Hanks shit. Dude, you're jacked. He's jacked, man. I ain't, talk, I ain't coming at Chad Hanks. I ain't going to see him in a different way. Tom Hanks' brother is like almost a twin. Imagine being the guy trying to be an actor. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I mean, look, Colin Hanks looks like Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Colin's a nice kid, but Colin, Colin took the path that was easiest for him. Chet does the acting, but Chet is also like a millennial. So he's grinding on the gram now. I mean, I... Chet Hanks is one of the, who's more talented, me or Chet Hanks? I can't fucking, I can't have a body like that. I can't ride a motorcycle like that. I'm not a good actor. I can't put out bad music. You're more talented. I can't speak Patois. I can't even speak Greek. So by 2021 standards, Chet Hanks is a talented kid. If he keeps grinding on the gram, he can fucking monetize monetize he's a personality chad hanks a person so he just made news by with the white boy summer hey guys um look i just wanted to tap in really quick i just got this feeling man um that this summer is uh it's about to be a white boy summer you know take it how you want and he was like i'm not talking about like trump nascar white boy i'm talking about like me john b you know me um john b jack harlow type white boy summer you know what I mean? john b and then some other rapper with the hair what's the guy's name you know him you probably saw him in concert some other what i mean there's it's just white rappers now there I, there's just so many white rappers i mean can we at least get back to where like 
don't you think there should be like some stigma with white rappers? Like you should only be allowed to be a white rapper if you uh, if Dr. Dre says it's okay. <laughs> It used to be a day where if Dr. Dre said it was okay, you could be a white rapper. Other than that, it's like, what are you being a white rapper for? Chef Chet, the oatmeal bastard, block shit, boom -ga. You see Michael Rappaport. Chet Hanks needs to be the third producer on Long Days. Make it happen, Yanni. Do you remember? Uh, Chet Hanks probably could do the, be it. Chet Hanks is a fucking jack of all trades. Do you remember when uh, Chet put that video out saying, like, like when his parents just got COVID, like, oh, my parents are fine. He should have done that in a Jamaican accent. He should have done that. But he did do uh, the red carpet in a Jamaican accent. And um, yeah, that was great. That was pretty great to watch him. Tom Hanks' son go, we are big up. We are big up yourself. <laughs> Butty boy. Blue, 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 blue. I think he even did gunshots in the air. Boom, bye, bye. What you do with Bridgeron? This is Chet Hanks coming at you, bye. You understand? You mean the Chet Hanks, bye. Yeah, at the Golden Globes. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the kid speaks Jamaican. I mean, how dope? How did he learn it? Nobody's impressed. You What's easier, remembering your lines or learning a full language that white people really don't speak? And the kids smoke smoothies. Smoke smoothies. I mean, I am... So it's going to be a white boy summer. He's making merch now. I'm plugging Chet Hanks' merch. He's got black girl, black queen summer. I think he's got, if you go to Chet, Chet Hanks' merch, I think he's, I'm getting one. I'm getting a fucking white boy summer sweatshirt, son. Think Jeez. not? You know I'm rocking that. I'm rocking a white boy summer. Chet Hanks release merch, white boy summer. So of course, because he called it white boy summer, it was a little controversial. But, you know, that's what he's doing. That, that, that's talent now. In 2021, stirring up a little controversy. Here we go. Let's, let's check it. Hey, Payback, that's some nice merch you got there. Oh, uh, this? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the White Boy Summer merch, dude. That shit hard. Yeah, it's tight, right? Yeah. Hey, yo, check this out. Look. Let me see. Oh, you got the shirt, too? Yeah. Dude. White Boy Summer, yeah. So there you go. So that's Tom Hanks' son, and he, if you look me straight in the eye and tell me that that's not Tom Hanks' most interesting son, you got another thing coming, dude. I'm more interested in Chet Hanks than I am Tom Hanks. What's Tom Hanks doing? Drinking soup right now? Sitting in a diner with Rita Wilson? Asking for another coffee? I mean, they've been done, dog. I've seen Castaway. I've seen Forrest Gump. I even saw Tom Hanks at church once when he came up and asked for Andidro, and he actually came for communion once when I was working as an altar boy. And when the priest or the bishop or whoever was there asked him for his name, he said Tom Hanks, which to this day, I don't know if that was arrogant or ignorant. I, I've been thinking, and I want to know the answer to that. So Tom Hanks, if you see this, or Chet Hanks, if you watch this, can you ask your father, was he being arrogant and wanted people to know that he's Tom Hanks, as if we didn't know? And is that why when they ask his name? Because when the priests in Greek Orthodox ask your name, you're just supposed to say your first name, okay? That would be like someone asking Jesse, what's his name? And he goes, Jesse Scatoro. And people are going like, why'd you give me the last name, dog? Did you write a book? Are you someone famous? Are you a senator? You know, are you a basketball player? Just the name's Jesse, okay? So when you go get, a, when you go get the communion in the Greek Orthodox Church, someone asks your name, you just say Yanni. You say your first name. So he should have just said Tom, but he Maybe said... he didn't know, though. He, that's the thing. Well, I want to know, was it arrogant or ignorant? Uh, it's either one of the two. Like when you say Andrew instead of Andrew. Yeah, well, yeah, not really. It's not the same thing at all, but no. but <laughs> why not? If you went up and said your name is Drew, I mean, you know, at least the priest knows you're fun, and that's what it is. And look at this. He's already there, he's already be called racist because of, of the, course. the font he used. Of course, of course, he used the font, and he said "white boy summer." So no, it's used by white nationalists. Oh, the it's used. He probably font. did that on purpose too for the um, for the press. I mean, he's not stupid. Give him credit. So yeah, the font apparently. In kid. Yeah, the font apparently that he's using is white nationalist. Is there white nationalist? What did he type it in? Um, in swastikas? What did he make the letters out of swastika? What What's the print? What does the print look like? I mean, this is crazy. What would Mr. Panos tell Tom Hanks for being a bad father? What happened to the child here? How come he's on the motorcycle here hanging out with Black Blue Bull? How come he doesn't have a job? And how come you acting and the wife? How come there's no female actresses? Rita, how come the name's Wilson, you Greek? What's happening here? This family is not Greek. How is that font racist? Yeah, so there's the font. The last thing I would have thought about that 
is that it's racist. How is that racist font? Is that how Hitler uh, pissed his name in the snow? I mean, what is that? What is racist about that font? I mean, now font is racist. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, you want me to read why? It yes. Be racist. It says um, use of a Gothic style f- style font that is close to the one used by white nationalists. It is also similar to Frankfurter fonts, which were used by Nazi Germany. Most promptly on the cover of Hitler's Mein Kampf book. Uh, maybe he researched that. Maybe he did that to get more press. You gotta, you gotta, the kid knows how to get press. I mean, the kid's kind of become sort of an internet celebrity in a way. He makes headlines, people, he trends. So Chet Hanks is trending, dude. Yeah. You know, while Colin, while Colin Hanks is just like raising his boring kids and they're wearing sweaters and drinking Starbucks coffee. I'm rolling with Chet Hanks, son. If I'm going to, I'm going to share a blunt. It's going to be with Chet. And if Colin asks me if I want to smoke some grass, I'm going to be freaked out. Yeah. I don't want to smoke grass. Cause he'd be, hey man, do you want to smoke some grass? I want to hear a guy go, yo man, you want to hop on the back of my fucking chopper and smoke some blunts with, with Mexican gangsters? And I'm going to go, are you Tom Hanks' son? He's going to go, you fuck right I am, dog. And if you keep fucking talking shit about me in your podcast, I'm going to come see you in a different way. Yeah, one Twitter user wrote, hmm, unfortunately that merch looks aggressively racist. Yeah, so people are trying to cancel him for the, uh, for the, for the um, font. What do you think Tom does though? He's trying to, I think Tom sits in diners, dog. I mean, you know, there gets a point where, you know, diners are like nightclubs for old people. It's like there gets a point when you're in your 60s where all you want to, you got your favorite diner and you go there with your wife and you guys drink coffee and, and make conversation with the waiter and you have a different dish from the middle of the menu, okay? Because young people go into diners and order eggs and, and burgers. By the way, this is what I want to say. Who... Who go? Who gets a burger when there's an option for a cheeseburger? That's always that always like. Why do places even have hamburgers on the menu if there's the option to throw cheese on it? Who says nah? I'm gonna Lact- get a burger. Lactose intolerant or Asians? Asians. Asians. Thank you. It's a hate <laughs> Jinx. crime. Jinx. Hate crime just happened in here. I'm putting in fucking Ned Astro. Okay. Hashtag this. Fucking episode is going to be called Stop Asian Hate, and we fucking start right there. Okay? Asian people are not lactose fucking intolerant. Asian people are tolerant of foods that aren't cheese. That's the way you should see it. Do you understand? Do you understand? Asian people are capable. So what? They just got fucking liquor and they get a little drunker. That's not their fault. It is white supremacy inside cheese that doesn't allow Asians to digest it. Do you understand? I'm putting you on fucking notice. You're on fucking notice, Drew. Stop Asian fucking hate. Cheese is racist. Eliminate cheese. Why is fucking cheese still here? It fucking discriminating against Native Americans, discriminating against fucking Asians who don't have the enzymes to digest it. And also some Jews are lactose intolerant. And why is annoying still a thing? Ban annoying because some Jews aren't annoying and have to deal with ones that are. (laughs) Ban it. It's discriminatory. Okay? Ban it. Ban it. Every group needs to be banned. You understand? Okay. No, no more white American cheese, only yellow. Just no, yellow's fucking banned, Drew. Yellow is fucking even worse. That's an insult to fucking injury. Okay, Dr. Seuss, that's your new fucking nickname. Do you understand? I'm putting you on fucking notice. Cheese should only be black. No more fucking cheddar. No more white cheddar. No more fucking Swiss. And definitely no more fucking American, which isn't even cheese. It was invented to insult Asian people, Dr. Seuss. Dr. fucking Seuss. Stop Asian fucking hate. Okay? Also, you know who else is on fucking notice? Godzilla. The fucking original Asian hate crime fucking monster. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Do you understand? You're going to get angry at fucking Shane Gillis for saying something on podcast? What about fucking Godzilla? who's been stomping on poor Asian people for fucking centuries. 
Might as well have a fucking white supremacy t-shirt on in the letters that Chet Hanks sells his merch in while he stomps on fucking innocent Japanese civilians. Do you understand? I'm pinning you and fucking you. You're on fucking net ass. You're on net ass. You know who else is on fucking net ass? Luke St. Simon here. Fucking great white sharks. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Fucking great and white shark? It's just a fucking shark. It doesn't have a fucking race. What kind of fucking person named that? It was not an empowered PSA. G E N D S T. There's no fucking white supremacist sharks. Fucking put them in jail. Put those fucking predators in jail. Fucking white sharks. Great white sharks have to go to fucking prison. Okay? Okay, enough of Luke's name. Simon. That was fun, though. That was fun to put some people on notice. I, I didn't mean to say that some Jews are annoying. I only was joking about that because I know Jews very intimately. I grew up in New York City. All my girlfriends have been Jewish, and they can be very annoying sometimes. <laughs> but nobody better at, cu at cutting a fucking a line on Broadway. Nobody better. Nobody better. You ever go to a Broadway play? I mean, they use all the doors, whether there's an usher there taking tickets or not. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's not true at all. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, somebody today would call me like a Jew hater for, for, for making a joke about annoying. It's crazy. Um, even though, you know, all my friends are Jews. That's how I know it for a fact. I apologize about the cheese confusion. No, it's okay, Drew. You're a woke kid from Bergen, Jersey. People expect a lot of you. Here's the deal from being from Jersey, North Bergen, is you're coming in with a low bar. So it's like, yeah, you're on fucking notice. I think you said only yellow cheese, which is no. No, Dr. Sis. You don't have to apologize. But I am apologizing. I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm seeing the error of my ways and I'm changing. I will be retiring from this podcast. And uh, Venetia will be going through a race change and taking over. So she'll be a female transracial African-American woman who will be doing this show. Let it happen. How much fun or a world would that be if you could spend half your life as one thing and then the second half as something else? Can't people just see into the future and, and, and stop trying to hold on, okay? My little girl can do half of her life as a girl and then the second half decides she wants to be a male weightlifter. Big deal. Let it happen. Also change races, dog. People really want to change... Rachel Dolezal is a civil rights hero. What can end racism more if people change places? Okay? Rachel Dolezal is choosing to live as a black woman and people say that that's a horrible thing. It's a beautiful thing. She's basically saying, I want to be black. Meaning black is beautiful. I wish, I'm with you, Rachel. I think you did a beautiful thing for the raceless future, the hopeful utopia that we all want, which is raceless. You know, let's spend a little time as each. You spend the first quarter of your life as Chinese, okay? A little surgery, very simple surgery, a little, a little nip and tuck. <laughs> no pun intended, just you got to do a little facial reconstruction is what I'm saying. So the, the nip and tuck is in there. I didn't even intend that, to be honest with you. Do we have to take that out? Because I didn't even intend that. No, I don't tell you about anything. Yeah, I didn't even know. But I'm, I, I meant like you have to do some facial reconstruction. God, you got it. I mean, it's like landmines everywhere. It really is. It's hard to do comedy. And if I did intend to do the nip and tuck in there, that's hilarious. And, but I can't admit that. Even though I didn't. It was just a happy accident. That happens when preparation and hard work meet. I work hard on my borderline edge, you know. So you spend the first quarter Asian, then you do the second as, uh, of course, Indian. 
Don't you want to know what it's like to be Indian? And then you do, I want to do female. I want to do female. I want to get fucked by a guy as a woman. <laughs> getting, getting, fucked, getting fucked by a guy as a guy, not the same. That's gay. But if you're a woman, that's straight. So as long as, if I'm getting fucked by a guy, I want it to be straight. I just finger myself all day. Drew. Derek, there was a whole Derek at the beginning, brother. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm from Florida. And I did a whole Derek at the beginning. Come down to my establishment, brother. And I did a long look St. Simon. And the question is, what did Marisa get with her stimmy check? That's it. You know what? Giannis Papas took a little, a lot of heat over there for, for calling that shit a stimmy. But let me tell you something. They don't know. Those chinos. You got those chinos now down in Canal Street. They call in the stimmy too. They say, five dollar, five dollar. You have your stimmy? They were asking everybody, even fucking tourists. And yes, there's some tourists here that are coming on Spirit Airlines. That's it. Because Spirit Airlines needs that fucking work. That's it. They don't care if you got COVID fucking and, 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 and the bird flu. You could get a fucking $30 ticket on Spirit. That's it. Yeah, I'm spending my stimmy. I spent my stimmy on chancletas. That's it. I put a mask on one into the mall, into that bucket, you know, next to the cell phone case store in the middle. That's where you get those fucking chancletas. People ask me, Marisa, where can I get chancletas? There ain't no fucking chancleta store. That's how I know you never own chancletas if you ask me where you... You can't get them just at Neiman Marcus. You can't just rub to Bloomies and say, wait, them fucking chancletas. They don't have them. Only people that got them chancletas is fucking chinas. That's it. Them shits is Chinese slippers that we appropriated. That's it. I'm sorry, Jeremy Lang. I love you too, Jeremy Lang. I was a big fan of Ling Sanity and all that. But I'm telling you, there was a little cultural appropriation. Remember that? Can your morning say he had the cornrows and that he got up mad because somebody called him coronavirus on the court and shit? But it's like, look, shit, we took those slippers too. Them shits is Chinese slippers. Okay, they either rigorous on me or you see an old Chinese woman sucking her, sucking her fingers, sucking the, using her fingernails as toothpicks while she's in them shits. You know, just, you hear that. If you look down and you see chancletas and you hear this, it's definitely not going to be a rigorous girl like me. That's going to be a, 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 an Asian grandma. If you hear that. And I know this shit because I grew up in New York City. We exposed to everybody. So don't even tell me that if there was a multiple question on the family feud and somebody said, okay, you're on the train and you see somebody picking a booger deep. The chances of them being Asian are what? 60%? 80% or 125%? I'm going to say 100. Okay. If you see a Chinese person on the street and they eating their lunch in a position that looks very uncomfortable, bent down like they squatting and taking a shit, but they're eating a full plate, a styro, they're, they're eating a full styrofoam plate full of food for 25 minutes sitting like that. What's the chances that they, that they, that they Chinese? I'm going to say hundred percent. I'm going to say fucking hundred percent. I don't know what it is, but fucking white people, Latin people and black people just not flexible like that. I never seen nobody named Jenkins who be eating his fucking eating his lunch like that. I never seen nobody named Martin eating his styrofoam lunch like that for 25 minutes sitting like that like a catcher. If you sitting eating your lunch, if you sitting eating your lunch like my, Mike Piazza for 25 minutes, there's a 100% chance you Chinese that's it. You as fucking Chinese as the chancletas I got on my feet. I'm sorry. But we need that's that has nothing to do with Asian hate and all to do with Asian recognition. That's it. That's Asian love. That's it. I'm telling you, dog. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's not my fault every time I've been on a train, I saw somebody picking my nose 85% of the time that, you know what? Their name wasn't Derek. <laughs> that's it. I'm just telling you what I've seen, but there's also, that's just jokes. I'm, we're just having a good time. That's it. But we need to stop all this Asian hate and white supremacy. That's it. What did I do with my stimmy check? Chancletos. Like I was saying, there's no chancleta store. You need to go to the middle of the mall in a big-ass fucking bucket right next to the cell phone cases and tell that China, fucking, where's the fun bucket? And then you put in there, there's all those different colors. I, I get everything except yellow because I, I got my, my feet. That's not my area. My feet are big. I don't want to look like Big Bird. That's it. I never get that yellow, so I don't want to look like Big Bird. That's it. I'm sorry. We just having fun here. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I don't do the black neither. I don't do those referee chancletas. 
That's it. I'm not wearing those black shits. Them black shits look like fucking I'm about to ref a high school game. That's it. I do pink. I do blue. I do lavender. I do purple. Sometimes I mix them up like Punky Brewster. I don't fucking care. That's it. I wear one red and one blue. That's it. Where do you want to go on a date? I'm married, girl. DM me. Don't ask me in public. I'm, I'm not trying to look like Big Bird. That's it. Holy shit, that's it. So, um, we're having a good time. Oh, man. What do I say? I, sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting, which is hilarious. Michael Strahan got his teeth fixed. Did you see that? Do you think that's an April Fool's? Yeah, what's next? Madonna is going to get her teeth fixed? Do you, think, um, do you think if Madonna and Michael Strahan made out, they could tongue kiss each other with their teeth clenched? They could put their tongues through the hole and just uh, 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 touch each other like that. They're too famous. Why would he fix that? That's iconic, dog. Why would you do that? Looks like he's wearing a mouth guard. What's wrong with him? Come on, dog. It's iconic, Michael Strahan. And you got those Colombian fake teeth. Right? Yeah, Where most charismatic guy I ever down. met was Michael Strahan. Come on, dude. We, we like that little gap in the middle. By the way, uh, what's Madonna doing? Speaking of gaps, can we go to Madonna's Instagram? Yeah, I mean, what are you doing? Did I Have I talked about this on the podcast yet? Have you ever smoked a cigarette through a mask like Ben Affleck? <laughs> the teeth would be tangled like making out with braces. Um, yeah, let's go to that one, the second one. No, no, no. Yeah, the second one right there. I mean, what? Have I talked about Madonna on the podcast? Yeah, you did a riff. I did a riff about, like, why is she doing this? Well, here we go again. I just, like, can we just pull this up for the people to see? I mean, Madonna... Why are you even on Instagram? Do you think more people need to know who you are? You are the most famous person. You're one of like a handful of the most... No, not that one. Keep scrolling. It's in, it's in that one though, the second one, but there's like you can swipe them. You can swipe. Right? There's more than one photo there. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keep swiping. What the fuck are you doing, Madonna? Leave that. It looks like a it looks like a, a coroner's photo of a dead body. Yeah, she's like eighty. I mean, what? Do you, she's in her well into her sixties. What are you doing, Madonna? It's just uh, the great Tim Dillon said. Credit to Tim Dillon. We were on the phone, and he said, "There's no way out of the funhouse." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Madonna, hang up your hooker boots and nasty panties. Throw on some fucking jeggings and read to your grandkids. What are you fucking doing? Why are you on Instagram? Snoop though. Snoop's trying to get some. Snoop's trying to get in there. She I mean, got a look, nice set. She looks decent on this one, but the third photo, like who? This is what happens when you have too many yes people, not yes men. We got to put that on notice. Yes people of all genders. This is what happens when nobody can say no to you. Anything. And like, you, you need someone here to be like, Madonna, this, this looks like a coroner's photo. I don't know if we want to put this one out. You're Madonna. And why are you putting these photos out on Instagram? You're one of the biggest icons of all time. Like people who are on Instagram are trying to get Instagram famous or trying to get more followers. Madonna, you don't need new followers. The entire gay community of the world fills up your stadiums. Okay, you have 15.8 million followers. Have someone gram for you. Why is Madonna handling her own Instagram? Okay, that's like, you know what I'm saying? How many of those? That's like letting Chris DiStefano handle his own fucking black and white cookies. He's going to abuse them. <laughs> He's going to have more than he should. How many of those 15.8 do you think are straight? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I would say probably 15 million gays uh, and 800,000 women. I agree. Yeah, but look, John Bones follows it. Followed by John Bones and Ariana Grande. So now I know that you follow John Bones and Ariana Grande. Of course I do. Yeah, of course you do. How many times have you moved your monkey to Ariana Grande? Her defigs? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the defigs are disrespectful. They make some good ones. Yeah, I mean, the defigs are different. We should only be seeing Madonna in a hologram at this point. <laughs> good point, Snack Nicholson. My fans, our fans from History Hyenas are the best. Did you see the Zack Snyder Justice League? I don't know what that is. It's a movie. 
Yeah, it's a movie. So, um, Daniel Dobrik. Daniel Dobrik is a uh, god. Daniel Dobrik. Here's the thing. I'm in my 40s, so the good news for me is it's, Daniel Dobrik has always been canceled because I have no idea who he is. And his name's David. David Dobrik. <laughs> so David Dobrik, once a heralded member of the Jewish community, I assume. Is Daniel Dobrik a, a Jewish name? He's actually Slovakian. Slovakian. Like me. Daniel Dobrik. Look at this kid. I mean, David. 2021 does come with some surprises. Because that kid does not look like a celebrity. That kid looks like he should be hanging from his underwear in, in, in PS51 down on Fifth Avenue in 1997. I have no oh, yeah. idea who this is. You don't know any dude? Because, dude, you're, you're going to be 50 soon. Yeah. He yeah. is a couple years. the guy in yes. L.A. right now. So he was the guy. So Daniel Dobrik was a YouTube celebrity. Um, he, he's kind of the new celebrity. Like, dude, you could go in L.A. now and see Emma Watson and all these actresses. People don't even, like, bat an eye. The people who, like, the kids go crazy for and, like, paparazzis around are these kids, TikTok kids and YouTubers. They're the new celebrities. Like, nobody gives a shit. Matt Damon could be walking down the street naked while he's moving his monkey, and I don't think anyone would even ask for a picture. Daniel Dobrik, that's how famous he was. I mean, the guy, you know, he, he, was, he was in bed with major corporate. They were about to name a Chipotle burrito after him, Ooh, which they did. they did, and they took it back. Well, the thing is, they took back everything. The thing is that... I like, love having Drew here to tell me about shit that, that I need to yeah. know about that I don't care about. See, I was actually a fan of his. He made great vlogs. He was a funny guy. You were a fan he, of Daniel Dobrik? Get he, the yeah. fuck out of here. No, nah, no. Nah, he, had, he had good content. The thing is, when you're so squeaky clean... God, your clean, generation says content. When you're so squeaky clean and there's not one thing like bad about you to find... The, when it's one thing comes out, that's when everything comes out and when then you, you get canceled. When you play the game with corporations, when you get in bed with corporate money, when you try to be old school famous in this world where fame has exploded into a million pieces, that's where people make their mistake. They, Daniel Dobrik thinks that he's Jack Nicholson. He's not. Nobody is ever again. That era is over. Fame has exploded into a million pieces. And it, to know Daniel Dobrik, you have to be a certain age group. Dan, whatever his fucking name was, okay? You got to know Dan, David Dobrik. You have to be a certain age group, whereas there used to be celebrities that everyone knew. Like, nobody's parents knows who David Dobrik is. But he wanted to be like the internet's Jimmy Fallon. He wanted to do a talk show. Like, you know, anyway, you know, he wanted, he was in bed with, he was, he had a burrito, but, which by the way, he's not Mexican. He gave, so what the fuck is Coca-Cola that owns Chipotle fucking doing hiring a Sloveniac, okay, to fucking, to be a fucking spokesperson, to have a fucking taco named after him. Also, fucking Serena just said in her interview with Common, who's the journalist now, <laughs> okay, Common interviewed Serena because Common is a vetted, Columbia-educated, former 60 Minutes journalist. So Common interviewed Serena and asked, if you were a man, do you think you'd be recognized as one of the greatest athletes of all time? She said, of course, of course. And then he said, what if you were a white man? And she didn't take the bait, and she just said, any man. Because what Common forgot is that bitch sleeps with white dick every night, and she don't want to disrespect her husband, who, who started Reddit, which is an evil place. Don't go on that if you're a content creator. I'm no longer a comedian. I'm no longer a stand-up. I'm a content creator, and I'm fucking fully monetized. I'm monetized. Every in, I'm going to have Drew following me with a camera and I'm going to monetize my life. I'm going to monetize my wife and I'm going to monetize my baby. I will exploit my entire family in order to get followers. I will do anything. You will see stories with my baby. You will see Instagram posts. She won't agree to any of them because she's too small, but they'll be cute and I will exploit the shit out of her and whatever fucking relative I can find for fucking followers. Like the Ace family. I will fucking monetize my entire life. My mother-in-law. I'll monetize Jesse's fucking life. I will fucking monetize. I'll monetize anybody. Watch my story, son. I'm going to be fucking... I'm going to be monetizing people I just walk up to and fight on the street. Monetize. That's how you, you guys film it. Fucking... That's what people do now. 
like a, a lot of the people on TikTok just go up and do rude things to people in stores. It's basically impractical jokers if impractical jokers had any balls and they didn't set it up beforehand. We have to edit that out. I was just going to say, we have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just joking because the, the Practical Jokers is actually a very funny show where the pranks are very good hearted and stuff. You know? Wait. By the way, prank comedy. Do you think prank comedy gets big at the rise of an empire or the end? When do you think violent prank comedy becomes popular? During the height of an empire or maybe the end? Yeah, when we walk up to a street and punch each other in the face and yell, Milk Boys! <laughs> I actually have some Milk Boys merch. I know you do. I love them. I know them. you do. They're just, they're just like George Carlin. They're the best. Yeah, they're fucking good. So we're, we're, we're at the end. But it's a fun end. Enjoy it. You may get punched in the face in the street or there may be a small Latin kid crawling through your legs in a Target going, Mi bolo, mi bolo. What's his, what's the TikTok? He goes, uh, what's his name? He goes, uh, uh, Chewbacca Mumama. What's he got? Uh, uh, what's his name? He he just yells things in people's ears on TikTok. Chupapi Munyanya. Chupapi Munyanya. Um, like he just like moans in people's ears. Yeah, he just moans about? in people's his ears. His name is Salim. Salim. Salim the Dream. Yeah, Chupapi Munyanya. Like, uh, uh, Chupapi. Chupapi Munyanya. And then he'll drop a ball. In between people's legs, and they go, Mi bola, mi bola. <laughs> it's really funny, but you know what I mean? It's not what I would call art. Chupapi Munyanya. That's not him. That's not him. So. Um, it's not Celine, guys. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Prank comedy is just another genre of comedy. Um, and they're, they're all equal. Depends on what you like, whatever you're into. Some people. Some people want to, you know, they want to go see a, a fun comedian. Some people want to go see someone a little more thoughtful. It doesn't, it's completely subjective. Everything's exploded into a million pieces. Chupapa munyanya. Chupapa munyanya. Um, you can find him if you just go TikTok Chupapa munyanyo. Because <laughs> it's 2021. The standards for things have dropped a little bit, cuz. Hence why I have my own show now, because we just decided I have my own show. There's no gatekeepers anymore. We're just going, we're going to give me my own show, and we gave me my own show. And more people are probably watching this than Ellen. It's Oba. Ellen's a bitch. Yeah, Chupapi Munyanya. I actually... I, <laughs> yeah, I can't stop watching it either. Like, when I scroll on TikTok? Yeah. yeah. But when does he do Chupapi Munyanyo? Munyanyo. Yeah. Munyanyo. Yeah. Because this is, this is the comedy at the end of an empire. Like when Nero was at the end, when Nero was at the end, Nero was just walking around. I don't know if you know, Nero was, you know, crazy emperor of Rome. He would roll around with his friends and beat people up on the street in, in disguise. It's a true story. For fun, yeah. Nero, Nero. Nero. Huh? He was Bob? A Bob? Bob? I thought you said the Nero. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what you were saying. There. No, not Bob De Nero. Nero, the Roman emperor. Oh. But, you know, you're a smart kid, but once in a while, that 23 shines through like a fucking Jordan well, jersey. I just misheard. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I look at you and I see fucking Air Jordan flying through the air. Okay. Um, need to drop that quick five G's for Yanni's piece in my tub. Five grand. I'll come to your tub. We will do a squeaky clean episode together. Patreon.com slash Yanni long days for the bonus series that airs weekly every Wednesday. Squeaky clean. It's a hit. People love it. Ask the long haulers themselves. Don't take it from me. And then, of course, we got the character pieces that come at you every week as well. Additional character check-ins, sketches, bonuses once in a while early access just there's going to be so much content flying at you you don't know what's going to happen maybe one day i'll start a fucking daily morning show again you know who knows maybe i'll do wet by the water what the fuck i'm just patreon is our place 
to hang out, for you to support the show, and for you to get bonus content and interact with the other long haulers back there and make this a community that we're building. So I appreciate each and every one of you that signed up. You guys are producers of the show. Subscription comedy is, is the comedy where we just say, we go for the funny. Everything I said in this episode is just for the funny. I don't mean anything. I don't even care about anything. I don't have any opinions. I don't care. I love everyone I was talking about. Just making jokes. That's how it goes. You know it. I have to say this because I'm trying to, you know, you got hand. You got to hold everyone's hand now. See, that was about me. People listen to the whole thing and they wait for the thing that they're threatened by and they go, that was about me. I'm offended. They don't care about the other 100 offensive things I said for other groups. So, and they act like it's about some social cause when it's really just about them. When is Yanni and the boys coming to South Africa? Uh, that's a Greek. I already did it. I did a Greek show there and of course there was a bishop there. That's just what you got to do. You, when you fucking do a Greek show, there's just going to be the clergy is going to be there. Cuz is already over three G's a month on Patreon fucking rolling. Cuz he was. He absolutely robs. But where are the rest of you, dog? We're trying to get to 10 G's a month. We're trying to make this show big. Let's go. Together. We do it together. You been getting any good dick recently, Yanni? <laughs> Thank you, bucket of bread. <laughs> bucket of bread. No, been getting none. I'm going through a dry spell, bucket of bread. So um, that's it for the show, man. I think we, got we, ads. we pretty much we pretty much got to everything. Yeah, we got ads. Can we cut these in? Uh, yeah, we can cut them in. The small business sponsor tier on Patreon is almost sold out. I believe we're at four. There's only one slot left, so I want to give a shout out to our newest sponsor. Give it up to my boy Joseph. DeMonte, who joined last week while we were filming live on air. He was getting in there because, cuz, he is a Bay Ridge kid where we shoot the show, where my house is, Bay Ridge. And he actually is the owner of one of my favorite spots that me and my wife go to all the time and we used to go to all the time. They got a cool outdoor space during the summer. You go there, they got great drinks and amazing food. If you like that Mexican food, which I do, you got to go to Blue Agave and you can follow them at Blue Agave Bay Ridge on Instagram. Check it out. It's on 3rd Avenue and 72nd Street in Bay Ridge. One of my favorite spots. Not even lying to you. I go there, I get a mojito, and I get some, I get some Mexican food. Dasse. All right, and we're also brought to you again by Max, Mr. Good Guy Long. And uh, it's Good Guy's Refrigeration, all right? He's got two locations, one in Palm Springs. The first one's in Seattle. This guy works out of his truck. He'll fix your refrigerator. I mean, if your refrigerator's got fumes, he will crack it open and clean it out. You can go to goodguyrefrigeration.com and check it out. All five-star reviews. A couple of ones with fumes. A couple of people. You know, there's a couple of Karens who left some bad reviews, but mostly good reviews if you check him out. So he's mobile. He'll come to you. I don't know how far he'll drive. Cuz, will you go to Fort Lauderdale? All right, you're in Palm Springs, LA. Will you drive across country? So if you live in the Palm Springs area or you're in Seattle and you got a fridge problem, you need something repaired, hit him up on their website, goodguyrefrigeration.com. Okay, and we're also brought to you by Jared Z from the Stink Box, Tallahassee, looking for that hairy Yanni P to make me. So our sponsors, these are blue chip companies here. <laughs> Only blue chip. So Jared Z from the Stink Box, Tallahassee, looking for that Yanni P to make me a Kazi. That's the full name. And he got a little hurt that I didn't put that ending in it. Not, but make me's funny too, Jared. So they're both funny. Um... So, Jared, he has over eight years of experience in the moving industry. And he'd like uh, to make sure his customers are informed on how the industry works. Some brokers will mislead customers into believing they are carriers, overprice them, and promise them schedules before a schedule is even confirmed with the carrier. Luckily, Jared is honest and cares about the customer's experience. A customer can either reach Jared or his employee, Kristen, to get a breakdown on how it works or simply go to the website and read the How It Works page. We're reachable prior to the pickup, during the transport, and after the shipment is made. These guys are on it, cuz. The only problem is, Jared, you didn't give me a website. So I don't know where to send the people, but make zero mistake. Next episode, you will tell me because you forgot to tell me it is exclusive autoshipping.com. My fault. 
The company is exclusive, autoshipping.com, and they are based in the ship box that is Tallahassee, Florida, brother. Me and these guys go way back, so go down to exclusiveautoshipping.com and see what they're doing, brother. They will ship any car or anything with wheels, really, brother. If you got a fat aunt or somebody who's in a wheelchair and you want her out of your life, exclusiveautoshipping.com will ship your fat fucking relative out of town, brother, because that's what they do. There's a ton of brokers out there that will lie to you, but if you go to exclusiveautoshipping.com, they'll give you a free online quote and let you know they've been doing it for five years, brother, and been brokering for almost 10. So you got to see your boy Jared over at exclusiveautoshipping.com. He's good friends with Derek in the Tallahassee area. From one establishment owner to the other, brother, ship my fat people out of town, brother. I'll put them in a wheelchair. You get rid of them. Okay, so as you know, we're going to read some Patreon names now. Uh, make your names funny. Uh, we enjoy them. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Day. Sign up for bonus episodes. So here we go. First up, we got Alex Rezinger. Alex Rezinger. Okay, that's just the good old, just Alex Rezinger. That's the German. His family probably boxed in the day. They did some things. They didn't just go to have a beer and do the flat. At some point, he had a grandfather smoking like this. Dr. Johns, we've been expecting you. Says here you're going to Switzerland. Hands up. I don't think so, Dr. Greenberg. Okay, then we got uh, George Greek with a hooded beast piece, Georgeopolis. <laughs> so the kid's, the kid's not circumcised. Then we got Jacob Ballinger, Yanni Guitar. Nice. Then we got Gabe. What's up, Gabe? Fun guy. Jacob Slurslag? Slurslag? I mean, is, is my podcast big in Germany right now? Jacob Sirslag. Sirslag. He also had some ancestors, did some things. Um, then we got uh, Taylor Forsman. Uh, Lewis. She tastes like Texas. <laughs> I like it a lot. Then we got Nate Kuo. Nate Kuo. Then we got, oh, this is a goodie. Elliot Page's prosthetic pseudo penis. <laughs> <laughs> then we got john d perez apparently he's a poet or an author i mean you don't got to put your middle initial in there john d perez you're not writing anything except for on the back of fucking cereal boxes yanni i have spani copita tattooed on my ass pappas that's greek racism you're on fucking nude ass i think a lot about bronson pinochet That's a highbrow good one. Smart kid and funny. Then we got Juan Garcia. Let me see your papers. Then we got uh, Brendan Matta. We got Fuckboy Fritz. <laughs> then we got uh, Twite 22 or T.W. White 22. Then we got uh, Michael Johnston. What's up, Michael? Then we got Jack. Hey, Jack. You're running Twitter into the ground. Twitter sucks, Jack. Kevin Coit? Kevin Coitz. I mean, how many Germans are on this list? Uh, then we just have uh, inverted testicles is here. <laughs> <laughs> then long day, short dick, that's it. <laughs> then we got uh, Captain Long John, uh, Thomas Lizzie, PK, Brew Crew 82, Sean, Daniel, Ben Gordon, um, The Villain Kiss, Ooh, Tristan. Hey, Tristan. Louis Zappian. How many Germans are here? Or is that Hispanic? Louis Zappian. I think that's Hispanic. B B L is here. Then we got Michelle Sullivan is a long hauler. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, somebody I get a fucking bear with. Then we have Omar the Halal Falafel Farmer. <laughs> if it cracks Jesse up, it's a goodie. Then we got Connor Mick with the potato shaped dick Kearney. <laughs> these are good ones then we got uh chrissy's rotten foot feta father bill gave me a three letter then we got jeffrey tubin's keyboard so that is what you call another smart good one google it if you're stupid 
or you don't read the news. Uh, Anne Franks and Beans. That's a great one. Uh, then we got Mike Quinn. Then we got uh, the the Squeakinator. That was there for the taking for a long, about six months since I invented Squeak. Um, Deirdre K. Jack. Martini 007. Martini 007. Witch Hazel, clean, no fumes, vagina ready to badge, bang, ladder 14. <laughs> uh, good one. Alex Domanian, Armenian kid. Alex Domanian, Domanian. Then we got Trish Bordelon. And finally, Margaret Ring. So thank you very much, everybody. As you know, tell friends as usual. That's how this podcast spreads. Like the virus that it is. The Greek virus. So tell all your friends. Post it in your stories. Word of mouth. Like my big fat Greek wedding. Let's make it this the highest grossing independent podcast of all time. Greeks, why are you not supporting these? Love you guys. I'll see you next week.